Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and you find me in the wonderful ancient Cotswold town of Burford. Referred to widely as the gateway to the Cotswolds, Burford started life as a fortified river crossing. Indeed, that's what the word Burford means. It guarded an important shallow part of the river Windrush through which people and animals were able to pass. It is, of course, very common that towns and villages are built on river crossings. This one was part of a main route north to Chipping Norton and Stratford on Avon and south to Bampton and Radbit, the nearest bridge over the next rather bigger river, the Thames. Along the ridge just south of Burford runs the A40, which is the east-west route running from London all the way to Fishguard on the west coast of Wales. So Burford has always stood at the crossroads of two major routes across the country. These days, the town is seen as one of the most beautifully preserved medieval towns in the whole country. The High Street is certainly one of the most picturesque. In fact, the journey down the steep hill towards the river is one of those experiences rare in the whole world that, given the right light and weather, can actually take your breath away. Now, there is some irony in this, as the beauty of Bertha today is largely as a result of the town's past failures. Towns that really succeed tend to be developed and redeveloped until their original character is almost completely changed. Burford has had a highly checkered past and has therefore remained pretty unspoiled. So we're going to take you on a little tour of this amazing town. If you'd like to come with me, I'll show you around. Approaching Burford from the east, the first sign of the little market town is the spire of the church protruding from the trees that surround it. The serene valley through which the river Windrush meanders is classic Cotswold countryside. The flat meadows on the valley floor, framed with undulating hills which are divided into a patchwork of hedged pastures, perfect for the raising of sheep, for which in medieval times this area was justly famous. The high street dips steeply down to the river and is lined with beautiful buildings. To start with, they are largely residential, stone-built with the occasional Cotswold gable, set above the street with a tree-lined border on either side, which give way to the broad, ancient market area carefully designed by the medieval planners. It's this street, with its fascinating collection of stone-fronted cottages, shop fronts, medieval alleyways, arches and courtyards, interspersed with large and grand medieval houses that draw so many visitors to Burford from all corners of the world. Between the late 11th and mid 13th centuries, the pattern of Burford streets and house plots were laid out by a succession of local manorial lords keen to exploit the ever increasing importance of the local wool trade. The high street was marked out, wide enough to hold a market, and plots of land roughly at right angles to the street. These plots can clearly be seen to this day from the air and were of a standard width and length so that future development and expansion was possible. It was the market in raw wool for both local and international consumption that laid the foundation of the success of the town of Burford. But from the 17th century, the town started to lose its importance. It became just a small local market town serving its local community. As a result, from that time onwards, the Burford buildings were generally repaired and remodelled rather than rebuilt, leaving the beautiful village we see today. After a brief revival of fortune in the 18th century, as a coach stop between London and Bath, the main east-west road was diverted away from the town and Burford fell into what must have looked like a terminal decline. And when the railways bypassed the town, it must have seemed like the end. But it was the discovery of Burford by the arts and crafts movements in the 19th century that gave Burford the lift it needed. Led by the highly influential William Morris, this group was a great advocate of the preservation of old towns and buildings, and most importantly of the control of restoration, which so often ruins the very thing it seeks to preserve. Morris set up the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings, partly in response to the over-enthusiastic restoration of the church in Burford in the 1870s. The church as it is today is at its core a 12th and 13th century building, 
sitting in what still feels like a secluded religious enclosure on the northeast corner of the town, with its almshouses and graveyard at its feet. It was in the 14th and 15th centuries at the height of the wool boom that the church you see today took shape. In May 1649, the church was a scene of a grim event. The Civil War was over, King Charles I had been executed, but unrest still dogged the new regime. Unsettled by the fact that they were not getting paid and rumours that they would be sent to Ireland, three separate regiments of the army mutinied and moved to join up, arriving in Burford on the 13th of the month. In the middle of that night, they were surprised by the arrival of Cromwell's army and after a short skirmish were captured and imprisoned in the church. Four of their number were condemned to death and on the 17th, three of them were publicly shot in the churchyard while the rest of the mutineers, known later as the Levellers, watched from the church roof. The fourth was made to preach to the rest about the folly of mutiny. The parish was left with a very hefty bill for the restoration of the church roof. Nowadays, one of the most beautiful and peaceful churches in the area, the Burford Church of St John the Baptist is an essential part of any visit to the Cotswolds. We're going to start our journey up Burford High Street here on the bridge, which is at the northern end. The bridge is first recorded in 1323, but was almost certainly built a little bit before that. It's slightly to the west of the Ford, which we mentioned before, which was at the end of the original medieval street, resulting, as you can see, in a slight bend in the road. The house behind me, Cobb House it's called, was lived in at various times by members of the clergy, including, in the early 1800s, Edward Philip Cooper, who was a relative of Jane Austen. During the Second World War, the house was used by the armed forces and then subsequently divided into flats. Finally, in 1958, it was sold by the church and now it forms two rather grand private houses. In 1609, a man called Robert Vesey, who as those of you who have seen our film on the Bampton Grammar School will know, was a usurer and something of a rogue, settled the house on the site behind me on his sister Anne, on her marriage to Richard Osbaldston from Chadlington. The existing house was built around 1725 for one John Jordan, to a design evidently strongly influenced by Powys House in Bloomsbury. These days, it's the Methodist Church. There's a record of a house here in 1473, belonging to a prominent merchant called John Pinnock. It was left to the parish in return for an annual mass for his soul. In 1610 it became an inn, under one John Sylvester, and the brick facade was added in 1715 by the then landlord William Tash to make it stand out from the other inns in the street. He hoped to draw those 18th century fashionistas travelling between London and Bath. This timber-framed building behind me, set on its octagonal stone columns, is called the Tolsey. It's typical of a range of market houses or town halls found in towns in the area. Its primary function was to collect the tolls from the market traders. And as you can see, it's perfectly situated to look over the medieval market area in the high street below. Its prominent position at the meeting of Sheep Street and High Street also helped the market authorities stop any unauthorised access to the market. It's interesting to notice that the east-west roads of Sheep Street and Whitney Street were staggered by the medieval planners where they enter the high street in order to control through traffic and ensure no one failed to pay their dues. These days, the top floor of the building is used by the local council for its meetings.
Well, we've had an amazing day in this beautiful medieval town of Burford. It's an extraordinary place. It's well worth a visit. It's the first of many films we're going to make about the wonderful towns and villages of the Cotswolds. We'll be putting them up on a regular basis from now on. I hope you'll keep up with us. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's free, and we'll keep you posted about everything we put up. If you want to find us, we're on Twitter and Facebook, The Cotswold Explorer, and of course our website is thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. We look forward to seeing you soon.